Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of HairTube. I'm here today with Bree. Hi. Um, I'm doing Bree's hair today, obviously, that's why she's here. And I'd just like to say thank you for everyone being so patient. Uh, I've had a lot going on here in Australia and I've been a bit slack with the videos. Um, but I have um, many scheduled in the next uh, eight to ten weeks, so lots of great content coming. And today will be no different because uh, I get you to take your hair out, Bree, if you don't mind. She has a lot of regrowth, you can see that. So we're going to have to address that today. And they're also going to cut her hair a little bit. The only thing I notice about Bree's hair, which I've been trying to talk to her about doing, is just putting a bit more shape in. It's just like a triangle at the moment. So she likes it blunt on the end. She doesn't like a lot of texture. I'm, I'm assuming from her experience with haircuts, when they've been texturized and had a lot of texture, they don't last and you need regular haircuts. And then with the color, she doesn't want it right to the root because she doesn't want to grow it with a GT stripe. So we're going to make sure that it's nice and soft when it grows out. First step is um, lightening it. We're going to use light mask with Bonder inside by Matrix. That'll obviously uh, look after the condition of the hair. And then we're going to do a toner. We want to stay as, as light and as um, cool as we can. You probably can't see it there, but one of the things that I'm really surprised at how red uh, Bree's hair is naturally. She actually has a lot of red underlying tones, and you'll know that that's challenging um, to then make sure that we can lighten it and not have that yellow and warmth coming through. So I'm going to use 30 volt. I'm confident doing that because we're using a light mask with Bonder inside to look after it and we're just going to leave it cool, process cool at room temperature and uh, for me when you're lightening hair you just do it slow. Seldom do you get a better result when you speed things up so I'm going to head out the back room, mix up some colour and then you guys will see me back here in a sec. So we spoke about um, keeping the hair um, more natural from the root out and it's going to be more dominant and heavier on the end. Starting in the back here using um, weaves and we're going to do them back to back. So this is because there's already existing colour in the ends so we don't need to worry about the hair being light in terms of colour on the ends because it's already there. What we do need to worry about is taking the colour straight through because it's going to damage it. So you probably can't see because it's off camera so I've mixed up some uh, 30 volt and some 20 volt because um, if I take the 30 volt straight through in some areas that are already potentially sensitized uh, we're going to end up with creating damage so we can manage that by using a lower volume developer onto the ends and that way we're going to get it lighter um, without making it dry because you can have a really beautiful color and if it looks dry i'm sorry it just doesn't look so good so i'm going to go through and keep doing these i'll come back and have a chat to you when we get sort of midway and let you know what i've been doing So we've got almost an uh, hour and 40 minutes has passed. Um, we did a full head, basically I did a full head of weaves and the only hair that's left out is the weaved hair that obviously is not being lightened um, because we do want to have um, some, a little bit of texture in there. We're going to process it now for probably 45 minutes. The ones that I've done underneath need to come out. So I'm going to get Brie over the base and we're going to rinse it underneath out. When you see us next, we're going to be toned, uh, pre-dried and ready to cut and style. So I'll see you guys back here in a bit. Whee! Okay, so we're back. So um, we did a full head of weaves. We used uh, Matrix uh, Light Master with Bonder inside 30 volt. Did a full head of weaves. I've um, toned the root down, we stretched it. I've toned the ends. Uh, in the description of the video, I'll have all the color formula. We're gonna cut Bree's hair dry. So I'm gonna blast it off dry. And then uh, when you see us next, we're gonna talk haircut.
Beautiful breeze is coloured and dry. So let's have a recap what we did. Uh, we did a full head of weaves um, all over. Uh, if you go back to the beginning of this video, you'll see um, the tra transformation that we've done. Uh, we just deepened uh, the root. This is all about uh, worn in sort of look. So one of the things that Bree stressed from the start is she doesn't want it to grow up with a really strong regrowth. And now moving on with a haircut, she said the same thing. So she previously had uh, haircuts that have been laid before. And like a lot of my clients um, that have come to see me, for whatever reason, people are, they're very adverse to having their hair laid. And I think it's because um, layering can be really unsuitable for the majority of people's lifestyle. So if you, you know, Brie obviously goes to the gym a lot, she ties it up, it falls out. Um, you're sort of locked into styling in a certain way. There's no versatility. If you want to wear it straight, you see all these chunky layers. So as you guys would be aware, the way that I lay hair, it won't look like that. So Brie's going to experience more volume, more body, more movement. And when she wears it straight, you won't see layering at all. The only thing you may see is a slight little variation length around the face, and that's it. Okay. So you cool Trust with that? You. Okay. <laughs> She trusts me. All right, let's get on with the haircut then. We are going to start with the layering because um, I said to Brie, I'm only going to nick the, the very ends off. I, I think that when we layer hair, it's important to have the balance and the contrast between the layering and the ends um, just spot on because otherwise it can sort of, look, I mean, it does look out of balance, obviously, but it can also look slightly clumsy if that makes sense like it can look like you know what's going on there like you shorten it it's layered a lot so for me if you're going to layer it you need to actually keep the hair like in elongated shape um, and that's best done um, when we have the hair at a certain length so i'm going to shape the interior first and then we'll trim the length of the very end so those of you who have watched me do this before you'll hear me speak extensively about the use of triangles and geometry when cutting hair uh, for a few reasons. First is it allows you to replicate what you've done and clients love nothing more than consistency. So that's very important. The second is it's control. We can actually control the hair with a triangle section, control its distribution. And if we, if we understand that short hair directs long hair, that means that we can make, we can put short hair in places and bully the long hair around, make it go wherever we want. So we're going to start with this triangle section here. Let's pop here four for me. Yep. And then we're going to project it this way. So you guys, I want you to see the projection. And we're going to put the short hair behind the long hair. This is all about seamless warning. We don't want any like dramatic um, layering that people see. Just close your eyes, Brie. I don't want you to get cut hair in your eyes. And we're going from short to long here. So previously you guys would have seen me do this technique, sorry to make you dizzy, right. and I actually would have done it this way, and it would have gone, it would have been quite strong. So what we want to do is we want even more seamless again. So we always want to cut from short to long. So being um, right-handed, I want to make sure I'm cutting away from my hand and not coming down into it. And I want to go there, and then in the wide point of the section, which is at the front, we're just going to give a little the texture so the hair has room to expand when it's worn. Might just actually adjust that a little bit because it might be a little bit too gentle. We actually want to be able to see it. Otherwise, if you say you're going to do something and your clients can't see a difference, I can guarantee they're not going to be thrilled. But at the same time, if we do something that our clients don't want, they're not going to be thrilled either. So I need to make sure that these layers aren't classic and chunky looking. Just because I cut that texture out, put it back in again. And we'll leave that there so you guys can see from the side. Beautiful. So when we wear this back, now it opens Cute. the face up. I like it. Opens the face up. Look at these. Make sure you want to pinch the cheeks. <laughs> and then, if you don't want to see it, we brush it out and it's like, well, is it even really there? Traditionally what we do is we'd layer on the inside of the face 
And then it's sort of like Jennifer Aniston from Friends, you get that sort of choppiness on the inside. It's actually coming back, believe it or not. I'm not really into it, but if my clients ask for it, I guess I'll have no choice. This is different. We're actually shaping it from the top down, and that allows us to have that flexibility and that seamless look. So it's literally that easy. This is a very, very gentle technique that you use on a client who just wants a little bit of shape. Now, when Bree wears her hair straight, it's, um, it's fine, but man, look at the difference. As soon as we pull that back off her face, I mean, really suits her face shape, and that's what it's all about. We cut shape to complement the person, um, and if it doesn't, then we sort of, we've missed the mark, so. That's the front done, it's that easy. Now we're gonna go and flow that on into the back, and then we're gonna put a little bit in the ends too. So how do we join this to the back? When we pull this back, so at the back here, this is the narrow point of the triangle. So the narrow point would be here, the wide point would be at the front. We're actually gonna use that as our guide to go into the back. So we comb this back, and here where you can see that, that's where our guide is. So we're going to use that as our length, and again, we're using triangles to control the distribution of hair. And then again, we're gonna go from short to long, using the rear of the front section as our shortest point for the back. And the more you over direct this, the more seamless it'll be. So we want it to be quite seamless. There's the back there. And if we leave that, you'll see that come around in the back. Now we need to bring one side at a time into that point. So this is a stationary guideline that we split in half and we bring all that to the middle. There it is there. Don't go looking for hair that's not there. This is meant to be seamless. So when you start going around to the sides, you will quite quickly run out of hair and that's, that's fine. This is very gentle. This is not meant to be really classic and chunky and overlaid. It's just going to prevent us from getting that real harsh triangle shape when we wear it out. We want it to have a little bit more of an elongated shape because it's far more flattering, I think, for me than um, the rectangles or the triangles. Again, once we bring it all there, we just very, very gently give the hair texture. Now we want to make sure you don't chop across the, the cutting line. You just go within the cutting line to give it separation. Otherwise what's going to happen, you just end up with like chatter marks on there, which it won't look seamless. And you can see that when I comb that down, it absolutely does. And I'm not expecting this to reach the back, but if it does, we remove any hair that falls into our guideline. And then we repeat this on the other side. We trim the ends and we'll be done because um, it's all about what we leave behind, right? Not what we cut off. So this is not like something you have to feel like, oh, I haven't cut enough of my client's hair. Sometimes I find that the smallest adjustment can make such a dramatic difference. And this haircut is absolutely that sort of haircut. And it's actually probably one of the most common haircuts I do because I always get asked by clients, I want to have volume, movement, and shape, but I want to see no layers. And you're like, okay, I'll just go at the back and get my magic wand. But then after thinking about it for a while, I, weren't, I, I learned that it actually is possible if we understand the use of geometry and math to be able to create those seamless shapes. So don't, be, don't apologize for not cutting too much off because as I said, people are paying you guys who are cutting hair out there for what you leave behind, not for what you cut off. All right, we'll repeat that on the other side and then it'll be time to do some styling. face so you guys can see just how different she looks with shape in her hair like it's brilliant it's so good this makes it so see now it looks like you got a side fringe but then when you go like this you can work straight 
Just the only difference is that, like there's mm. this tiny little bit there, that's it. But when you pull this back, that's special. Okay, should we style it on the side? I don't know. Should we style it on the side? I think so. Find fun? I think these guys will like it if we style yeah, on the side. Unusual? Yep. Done. So, what we're going to do is we're going to cool this down, grab my head dry, close your eyes, gorgeous, head back a little bit, just some cold air. We're just going to blast this off Bree's face. I'm going to spin it around so you guys can see the back. Hmm. Amazing. Sometimes when I use the, the flat iron to style the hair, there's something about, I think, I think you've often heard me say that when you shape it around the face, it's obviously, you're cutting it to be shaped around the face, so you need to actually mould it to the face, the shape of the face. So I think sometimes what happens with the flat iron is it just looks a little bit artificial. Now when I do that, it just looks a little bit less sort of contrived, it just looks real. Oh, like mm. California, like, I love you it. just need like, <laughs> a cute pair of shorts, a t-shirt and a skateboard and you're just like ready to rock up at Santa Monica Beach and just go nuts. Dip your heart out. Yep. Love Bree's it. done. I just got to grab a little bit of my fave because a smooth setter makes everything better and then we need just a little bit of volume fixer. I'm not sure if I've... No, it's your hair. Touch it. I don't know where this fit wants to Yeah, I'll show you. What we'll do is just head back. And we just put a little bit of spray and then we don't want to like force it to do anything really. We want it to just sit as it should, just look at me and the camera so everyone watching can see. We are talking about styling and obviously when I style the hair for you guys at home, I'm not going to make you sit down and watch me style the whole hair, it's a bit boring so you speed it up. But Bree and I spoke about, it's not about making it curly or wavy, it's about texture and movement. Um, and it's super important to make sure that it looks like her friends will say, wow, you're really good at doing your hair. Not like, oh, you've just come from the salon, like otherwise, or are you going to year 10 formal? It's like, no, I'm 20. <laughs> that was a while ago. So, colour's beautiful. Mm. I like the colour. A lot. I'm glad she likes it. And thanks for trusting me. That's all right. Because I think there was a, bit, a little bit of a like, nervous vibe <laughs> there in the beginning. Yeah. I'll you've only seen me at the gym and think, this guy hairdresser, seriously? Yeah, no, it turned out fine. Like, I'm glad it did. Turned out better than fine, like, as in, it turned out now you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke, it took you all day. Oh, really? Is that a dad joke? <laughs> kind of. I get told it's dad jokes. I'm glad you enjoy it. Thanks for coming in. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, if you like this video and you think someone may benefit from it, please share, um, because it's important we share our skills so other people can grow. If it's the first time you've seen us, well, I'll tell you what, it was a good first time. We'll be back. Make sure you subscribe. That way you'll be uh, notified whenever I drop a new video. Again, I apologize for the sort of like quietness around the channel. I haven't really released a video for about a month, but there's lots coming your way. So thanks for your patience and I look forward to seeing you guys all again soon. Bye. Cut. And that's a wrap. <laughs>